Kitchen at Westminster for another week of saving time. This week, let's embrace fall flavors, get ready for Thanksgiving dinner, right? My goodness, coming up. We're gonna make butternut squash soup. I already cut up one butternut, and I've got another one here. We're going to make apple crisp. I debated, you know something to go with the soup, and then I thought, forget it. Maybe if we talk about apple crisp right now, you'll make one still for your Thanksgiving dinner. Who knows, what could happen. These apples were donated by one of our graceful gardeners. The squash, 97 cents a pound at No Frills, donated this week. I've got some croutons for our soup, broth for the base, I've got an onion from the garden, some sage from the garden. All these things are gonna go into our soup. And the apple crisp is easy peasy. I mean, honestly, you've probably got most of the ingredients shy of the apples on hand already. Apples this week, you can get Portland's, which are beautiful for baking with. You can get them for $1.27 a pound at No Frills as well. I really recommend going there, okay? Let's just get busy with this. It's not gonna take a lot of time, but it takes a little bit. Let's finish the squash. So I'm suggesting that you run with about two medium-sized squash. So I've got one cut up in here, and it was about the same size. And now we'll get this one going. Uh -huh. And look, uh, when I did the first one, of course I dug out the seeds. Look at all the potential in here. This is a bowl full of potential. Look, can you imagine if every one of those grew into a squash? Fantastic, right? How could we go wrong? Got a garden full of it. We already bought those. They came with it. So just, I always just start by taking the two ends off and then I can make it sit flat too. So just get yourself a good sharp knife and get in there. And then that can go there. Our seeds are going to be in there, so in the, 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 the bigger end. So I usually start by making life a little easier. Start cutting it off into rings of about the thickness you intend to cut. And whew, main thing as we're going to boil this is that they're about the same size, so they cook in the same amount of time. And now you've got a flat end, so stand it up and go through. There. And look, look at all the potential. I'm not going to save more. I'm not going to get that carried away. But, because I, I saved a lot. And I want you to get in the habit of doing that, okay? That's next year's garden right there. If you've got kids, let them plant the squash. I'll tell you what, you get, the vine is so prolific and it really makes them feel like they're getting somewhere because the vine, it's, it's, it's very, very um, rewarding to grow squash. <laughs> It'll take over your yard, but maybe that's okay. It's easier than cutting the grass. I feel like, you know what, look, how could we not? How could we not? So just, I get a spoon. You know what else works great is if you have a grapefruit spoon. I don't know if people still use those or not. You know, with the little serrated tips on the end? They were a fancy thing. Cup. And I'm going to get that over the bowl so I don't have a big problem. Just loosen it with the spoon. You're going to get messy hands. They're going to be a little bit orange. For a little while, you will question, do I have jaundice? No. <laughs> and just try to scrape out as much of that kind of stringy bit as you can. Think like doing a pumpkin, right? Which is also coming up. So, you can always cut off a little bit more when you get to it. And then the other side. So, the thing about butternut squash soup is, right now, squash is such a good price. I'm making it with butternut squash. If you have some acorn squash, sunshine, sunshine squash, sweet mom squash, anything like that, do the same principle for your soup, okay? So you're gonna work with the exact same recipe and just a different variety of squash. I don't think spaghetti squash would work. I can't let it go. I can't, because look at that. They just came out perfectly. Oh my goodness, okay. I'm going to stop. I'm just going to pull these ones out with my hand. It's a little messy, I, I, I know, but whatever, right? It is what it is. There, oh, I'm doing it again. I can't help myself. So, we're just going to get that last bit scraped out of there. If you, 
they kind of flew on me. They want to stay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to mess around anymore with that. Eesh. Okay. Next thing, we're going to get the, uh, the peel off of it. That's the only kind of messy part right there. We'll get that out of the way so you can see what we're doing. And this is not hard, okay? I usually try to put it so that it's coming out at the bottom. And then just cut those edges off, okay? There, turn it that way. I can see better. Watch your fingers. Don't get too nervous about if you waste a tiny bit of squash, okay? Like, we're talking nothing here. That didn't weigh an ounce in my hand. We're not going to get worried about it. I'm cutting this into chunks of about that size. You know what? I'm on this. Let's come back when I'm done with the squash. We'll get ready for the next ingredient. Squash is all done. You need one onion. This one came out of my garden. We'll get rid of some of that outside stuff and cut it up. We're just going to dice it nicely and I mean it's soup so we don't want big pieces of onion in there. We just want onion flavor. We'll get rid of that. There. Get it off the plate. <laughs> plate. The cutting board. Otherwise no one asks, right? I know. I know. I'm pretty official with my, my jargon. My kitchen chit chat. Um, <laughs> that looks pretty good. Pluck out that centerpiece. There we go. That one's going to be good for us. I want to use the whole onion. Okay? They're going to be happy to have the flavor. If you, by any chance, don't have an onion on hand, a little bit of celery would be a good trade and fine. If you want a little of that kind of flavor, ah, it's all sticking to me. Hang on. We'll use this. It's going to be better. So we're just going to get this in a nice fine dice. So I'm just thin slices and then we'll go back the other way. This is such a nice soup. And you know what? I've made this soup like just quick, 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 right out, you know, get home from work, pull it together. You don't, this soup doesn't need to simmer all day long or anything like that. This is a good, I got home from work and made this soup. It's fine like that. The other thing is, is right now with Thanksgiving weekend, I mean, you've got a few good meals coming your way, no doubt. So sometimes something like soup is great. And if you've got some leftovers, making up a pot of soup to go with some leftovers could be the ideal way to, to just make out another meal after all your hard Thanksgiving day work. And it's easy. Easy, easy, easy. Just keep cutting up that onion. Try to get lots of small pieces, and then we'll dump it in the pot. Whoop. We'll get rid of that one. So I didn't like that one. And there. There's another one. Sometimes that very outside edge is kind of, I don't know, it gets loose. I think the heat does it. I'm not sure. I hope you can hear me. I've got the fan on because we're using the stove today. There we go. Okay. Let's get that in there. There we go. Done. And now, I'm kind of getting the orange hands. I want to use one of these apples in our soup. Apples and say and and squash go together so nicely. I'm not going to use that great big knife. That looks like a lot. Let's just get this apple peeled. Um, when my kids were little, it was, you know, this was a thing. Me getting the apple peel off in one swipe if possible, right? It was go, mom, go, go, go. Nobody cares that much anymore, but maybe I'm going to impress the heck out of you. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's it. That's my magic trick for today. I peeled a few apples. Um, <laughs> Now what I usually do to cut up an apple is I just kind of, you can see the core there, so go one side of it, go the other side, and then the two, oh, that core is big on that side, I can feel it. You'll feel it with the knife. There. We're just tossing this in. It's just going to give a little something something. And it's going to cook up 
in a heartbeat, so we don't need to worry too much about cutting it up. I mean, up there, half an hour on the stove, it's going to be gone. Now, buck 27, hard to go wrong with buying it instead of messing around with the little cubes, right? So we know how much I love those little cubes. So a dollar 27, and just straight in there. If you're doing the cubes, you want four cups. If you're feeding a vegetarian this weekend, lucky you, because um, that makes it tricky, right? It's, it's Thanksgiving, it's all about the turkey, so lucky you if you've got a vegetarian at the table asking questions. Um, if you do, buy vegetable broth instead. Okay, it's not, it's, it's gonna be great. And then they'll eat the soup, right? Then you've done that. That's all done. These are recyclable, these Tetra packs, so make sure you recycle that, okay? Make sure you recycle that. Now, we need a little salt and pepper in here. I'm gonna call it a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna call it a little bit more because it's soup. Otherwise, they'll just add it at the table. So, maybe I went two teaspoons. Throw in some pepper. I'll go a teaspoon of pepper. There we go. It's going to simmer for a while and get delicious flavor. Tiny bit of cinnamon, okay? Trust me about the cinnamon. If you want to opt out, oh my goodness, this is going to be a hassle to me, I can tell. Um, if you want to change the flavor a little bit, add some paprika in, in place of the cinnamon, okay? Or even a little curry powder. I mean, you know what your family likes, so cinnamon, paprika or a little bit of curry powder, any of those things will do. Think to yourself about a teaspoon, okay, to start. And then we're going to use that again. Last thing is, whoops, <laughs> Shed is laughing at me if you can't hear her. That piece obviously came off. I just want you to throw a sprig in, okay? We can get rid of the end. We're just going to let the flavor get in the soup. I trimmed this this morning. We're going to let the flavor get in. We're, we're not going to pluck it out later, okay? So you don't have to dice it up. Reach in there and give it a little push around. There we go. If at any point, you know what? I kind of feel like I want to. Those were some, that, that was pretty good sized squash. I'm going to add one cup of water to it. I feel like I want a little bit more. So, excuse me a moment. I'm just gonna add one more cup for a total of five cups. There we go. It might just be because I've got it in this really big pot that it doesn't look like much, but just a better safe than sorry. And then onto the stove it goes. Bring it up to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer. We can get this out of our way. This I'll just sit over here for now so I can use it if I need to. I'm going to flip my cutting board for the apples. Apple crisp. That's the soup. I mean, honestly, at the end we're going to give it a, a mash and add a little bit of cream. You can puree it in a blender if you want. It's just fine, just mashed up. Right. So easy, right? Apple crisp, butter a dish, preheat your oven to 375. This is an 8 inch square pan. This is what we had here. At home, I almost always use a Pyrex dish for an apple crisp. I'm not sure it's going to make a difference, but just in case, typically I would use a Pyrex dish. We need to start by mixing up our topping. I usually do it first just because otherwise the apples are sitting a long time and they start to get brown on you. So if we get this mixed up, it's all good. We need half a cup of butter, so that's one stick. Well, that didn't work out anywhere near like I was hoping. I thought I was going to get it off that tray. There. I'm not going to get nervous about it. I'm going to say that's done. And. Soften your butter, okay, when you're going to make it this because you need to cream it. 
So once you've got it in the bowl, just with the back of the spoon, start to press it out. I took that out of the fridge when I got here this morning and just let it soften. So just that kind of thing. There, butter. Now we're gonna add our, our sugars, sugar, sugars. Oven's 375 and warming up, yes. Shannon was checking with me. I am all over it, like dirt on boys. Okay, which is, you know, I, I have boys, so I can say that. Just checking, we're gonna go a half cup of each sugar. Half of that. I am easily distracted, in case you haven't noticed. So I try to put things back as soon as I use them to keep myself on track. And we need half a cup of brown sugar. Holy macaroni. That's done up tight. Oh, oh, oh. There. Okay. Even though it was done up so tight, it feels a little, a little like it's getting hard in the bag. I think it'll be all right when we cream it. There we go. Doesn't have a lot of time left in it. I better get baby. And we'll do that. I don't know who did it up the last time, probably me, but nevertheless, it was done up in a crazy way. That's all done. Now, cream that in. Just keep using the back of your spoon. See, that brown sugar got a little bit hard, but if I, there, it's breaking. Okay, just keep blending it in. Use the back of the spoon, it's easier. And spin the bowl to keep it moving. Look at that, yum. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, you just really want to get it blended in there, so just keep pushing it around. And then we're going to add, again, apple crisp is so easy, so easy. If you have a nice cast iron pan, it's kind of fun to make, make one in the cast iron pan and then you take it to the table and it looks all rustic and charming and everything, right? Yeah. If you've got a nice cast iron pan, use it. The beauty of them, of course, is you set it right in the oven and it's nice. There, that looks pretty good. We got it all blended. And now we want a little bit of flour. And we're gonna do a half cup of flour. There it is, I thought, what did I do with that? Half of everything. There's that, I'm just gonna get this in a lot. There we go. Blend it in. This crumble topping and I mean the nice thing about it is you can use the same topping with whatever fruit you put in the bottom. One day last week I did, we had some pears that were a little spotty so I made a pear crisp and just throw in whatever you got. Right now for Thanksgiving if you wanted to do something, if you did pears and threw in a couple of cranberries it looks really nice, right? I mean, it, and then it looks like a big deal, fancy restaurant food, right? pear cranberry crisp instead of, you know, the more standard apple crisp. If you were going to somebody's house, it's a nice thing to take. There. And now the oats. Look how easy it is. Easy peasy. Now you can go anywhere from three quarters of a cup of oats to a full cup of oats. I'm going to go a full cup. These are quick oats. If you've got the large flake, by all means, use them. I wouldn't use minute oats. They're too light. They'll disappear on you. One. And two. That's a full cup. There. See, look, we're, we're going to have supper and dessert in a heartbeat here. Imagine. Set that over there. I'm just checking this pot. It's out of boil now, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit and stick my spoon over got a long way to boil over. I don't think I have to, but nothing like thinking I don't have to. There, I'm just turning it down so I don't need to worry about anything. And do 
use. For this, I mean, really, I've thought a bit of a cutting action, I guess, with the side of the spoon happening. You just want those oats to start sticking together with the butter mix. So just keep cutting them in. And I've got a lot on the back of that spoon. There we go. And just, so you can use your hands if you want to. Uh, I mean, by all means, go ahead and get a little messy. I usually use my hands to put it on the crisp when we're ready. There, that's good enough. Six apples, or thereabouts. I say thereabouts, we want to get a good base. All apples are not created equally. Six of some is not six of another, and the other thing, of course, is some of them could have spots, in which case, you know, we're gonna we're gonna need a few more. So I'll do one to get us going and then we'll come back. So get the skin off. Oh, it broke. Heartbreak. We'll get another one. And that, and then. These are nice apples. Maybe brought them in. I'd go, you know, you don't want them to disappear on you. Don't dice them by any means, okay? So think like pieces like that size. Now, I'll come back when I've got this ready. So you can go off camera, Shannon, and we'll come back when we've got more. Okay, apples, I did, I think I did seven. And you can see, you just really want to cover the bottom of your pan, okay? Get a little bit of lemon juice, measure it if you want or not, your choice. And just give a little, I don't know, what's that? One or two tablespoons, thereabouts. Just to give a little something to stop them from turning to the ground. Get about another third of a cup of sugar, quarter cup, you're gonna know. And just sprinkle it across the top of your apples. You don't need to use it all. It's going to help to produce some juices, right? Like the sugar helps to make the juice come out of the apple. There we go. I'm not going to use all of that. And then a little bit of cinnamon. Just sprinkle it around. There's a bit of a breeze coming in the window. You wouldn't have felt it, but when I went to sprinkle the cinnamon, I did. There, that's good. Just a, just a little bit. That goes there. Sugar, lemon juice, a little bit of cinnamon, and now our topping. And again, just because it's been sitting and the butter might have hardened up a little bit or got weird, I'm just going to give it another little cut. And then I'm going to use my hands, okay? You do whatever you want, what feels good to you. I like using my hands for this because it's easier just to spread it around. And then we'll pat it down a little bit. And that's gonna be oh it's so good so so good there we go and see if you use your spoon then you're just gonna to have to push it around later one way or the other so I find starting with my hands is just as easy as anything else and then get it all don't waste any clean it out well don't waste any bring it back and now pat it down a little bit, not super firm, just enough to make sure it's, it's in the corners and at the sides, okay? Don't press it. We don't want it to turn into a bar. Okay, and whoosh. And then into the oven it goes for 30, 35 minutes. You're gonna be able to tell when you can see the apples bubbling up around the edges. Count on 30, you might go 35. Oven's at 375. In she goes. I've got a timer set, so I'm just going to push start. My squash is bubbling away over here. I'm going to find. I don't have one handy. I'm just going to grab a fork. And we'll stab it and see how it looks. All we're trying to do is get that squash to, like, so that we can imagine being able to mash it with a fork. So I'm just going to poke in here. I've got to get on my tippy toes to reach down into this pot. 
So it's starting. You can see I'm easily piercing. I'm going to let it go maybe another 10 minutes or so before I mash it and finish it. Look at us moving along. I'm going to wash up some of these dishes. We'll come back when it's time to continue with the soup. I'll see you soon. Okay, the soup is done in that the squash is all super soft. I'm just going to lift it off. You can see in here, I don't know, Shannon, can you see we've got a nice, nice, nice pot of soup going here. Grab your masher and, or if you are using a stick blender, this would be a great spot for it. If you're using your blender, then just with a slotted spoon, lift out the solid things and put them into the blender and give them a puree. Honestly, the squash is so well cooked that it's absolutely no trouble to do it like this. And I'm just going to, I see that piece of sage. And it doesn't matter if it's still in there, it's not gonna be a problem. Look at the bowl of compost we've got going this week. It's beautiful and it's gonna come back to us as more food. Yeah, if your sage is still in there, I mean, it's not, it's not gonna hurt anyone, that's for sure, but they just might not love the look of it. So you can see it, remember we left it in big pieces for that reason. There we go. If I see any more, I'll pluck them out, but I think that's it. And just keep mashing, it's soup, so you wanna get it thin or fine puree here. And, oh, there's another one. Haha, <laughs> they show up pretty quick. Easy peasy, this smells divine by the way. Look at me worrying about that little bit that's stuck to it. Um, just. Honestly, I find mashing this soup to be as easy as anything else. I very seldom get the blender out for this. If you have um, a food mill, you could put it through that if you wanted to. You've got to be careful though when it's hot because those do splash a fair bit. So mind yourself. At the, there's the timer. Let's get... Oh, I'm going to put this here so that we can set our apple crisp on it. Perfect timing. Oh my gosh, it smells really good. It smells really good. Oh, see what I mean about how it's bubbling around the edges? Look how nice that is. We're just going to set that right there. I generally find if I lift it out of the oven just before we sit down to eat, that it's a nice temperature when we eat. That's obviously way too hot to get serving now. So we're just, there's that. And I think it looks pretty good. I just see another piece of sage. Aha, uh -huh. there it is. That's gotta be the end. I didn't put that much more in. However, that was an exciting sage today. So no wonder it's still in here. This looks great. Sorry, really loud. Look, we've got compost and we've got next year's garden. These will grow in that, okay? Like, it's brilliant. About a half cup of cream, if you're trying to keep things, if you're trying to do something maybe vegan or, yeah, if you were going vegan, you could use coconut milk. And that'd be just as good. You don't even really need it. I kind of like it. I might go a little bit more. I'm going to go a little bit more. That's a big pot of soup we've got. I'm going to go, and I've got, I should say as well, this 10% cream, as well as the smaller, like the half liter, 35% um, if you're making pumpkin pie, you're going to need whipping cream. They're on for $1.97 at No Frills, so that's like a super good buy. They're usually eh, three and change. So, yeah, absolutely use coconut. I wouldn't use almond milk, but ah, I see another piece of sage. My, it multiplied in here. Um, it was just one little spray. It's gone a long way. So, if you use another, like a dairy alternative, Coconut is the only way I would go. Now, because we just added the cream, we might have cooled the soup slightly. So we're gonna put it back on the burner, just on low, and go and set your table. By the time you've got your table set, we're gonna be ready to play. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Let's get some soup in the bowl. It looks beautiful, beautiful, beautiful soup. 
Oh my goodness. Oh, so nice. There we go. And, and this is a big pot of soup. Like you would get, I'd say you'd get 12 of these bowls out of that soup. Now, apple cream, I'm not going to serve this yet. I don't want to put it in a bowl just yet because it would, you know, fall apart on this. We're going to save it so that I can deliver it intact to a family. And I just want to put, pick up some croutons, okay? It's the growing up version of crackers. I want three. Odd numbers are always nicer. And just put them on top, just like that, okay? Now look at this beautiful meal. You've got butternut squash soup. You saw what went in that. Beautiful food. Apple crisp. How can you go wrong? When you serve your apple crisp, if you have some ice cream, put a scoop of ice cream on it. My family, we like just a little bit, that nice 10% cream, just pouring a little bit of cream over the, over the um, crisp in your dish. Anything with even whipped cream would be nice. This is beautiful food. I want you to enjoy some of this, if not on your Thanksgiving weekend, pair it up with some of your leftover Thanksgiving dinner foods. Compost this week, it's coming back to us as more food. Speaking of coming back to us and going around, all of this based on these nice donations from No Frills and the Graceful Gardeners we were able to make use of this week, their, their harvest. This meal's going forward to a family here in Orangeville who will enjoy it and probably want to make this recipe. Quit letting food eat up all your time and money. We pulled this together in a heartbeat. For heaven's sakes, please, if you enjoy these recipes, like the, the video, subscribe to the Westminster Orangeville channel, and hit the little bell so you get a notification when new videos come up. Take good care. Have a very happy Thanksgiving next week. Let's talk leftovers. I'll see you soon.